Current events are starting to overtake us. We are definitely living in the end times. None of this is going back in the box. None of this is going to go away. The things that we see happening in the Middle East, actually happening all over the world, all these different powder kegs that are ready to go off, and it won't take much to get the world on fire. So the Bible tells us that we would be able to see the day approaching, the day when the Lord would be returning. And he's given us all kinds of indications in the word of God, in the uh, all the prophetic scriptures, as and specifically in the book of Revelation, which has sort of been my go-to book for the last few years to try to understand what that book is telling us. In the past, when I read through Revelation or when I listened to other people teach it, there was something that was not resonating with me, and I and I know the voice of the Lord in my heart. I, I know what it sounds like when I'm listening to things that are true, and there was something about it that wasn't, um, it was a little too shallow. So this is what I've been doing for the last probably six years is delving into end times and then specifically into the book of Revelation once uh, 2017 came and went. So the nation of Israel actually is a huge player in the end times, even though it is a very small country. And that by itself should get our attention. There are people who say, oh, we can't be in the end times. This, this can't be it. Well, we've got Israel as a nation. We're right in the middle of the fig tree generation. Actually, we're toward the end of that. Uh, we have uh, the Jews that have come back to Israel since 1947 when Israel actually became a state. People started coming back before then, but this is when it kind of became official. And that's when the Jews started gathering, coming back to the land of Israel. National Israel is a secular state. Because it's religious people there, we tend to think of it as being, you know, God's country, God's nation, and that whatever Israel does is somehow what God wants. But the actual nation itself was gathered together in unbelief. The The state of Israel is not the Israel that Christ is going to rule over during the millennium. What this was, national Israel was a kind of a safety net that allowed Jews to come to the land of Israel because it's out of the Jews who are in the land right now, that Jesus is going to pull out a remnant who will then uh, be here during the millennium after he returns, and he's going to use these people as the foundation for the new Israel, the real Israel that God had intended, uh, living in an enlarged promised land. So national Israel, this is not the Israel that is going to continue. In fact, national Israel the current one that we see right now, is going to be destroyed. And this is something that is really hard for evangelical Christians to think about, that national Israel, the, the current state that we see right now, as uh, we tend to think it's going to last forever. But this one isn't. This is going to go away. And Christ is going to establish the, the real Israel, the real one, that he is going to rule over. But he needs people to do that, and he needs to, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come back into the land so that he has them to draw from when he begins his millennial reign, which is going to be from Jerusalem. So the whole point of creating this nation state uh, you know, basically starting from 1897 with the first Zionist Congress all the way up to 1947 when they actually gained their statehood uh, via a UN resolution. It was for the purpose of regathering people, Jewish people. And granted, not all of the people who've come to Israel are really Jews. We don't know who is and who isn't, but God knows, and that's the important thing. So if go forward 70 years, we get to 2017. That's when the Revelation 12 sign happened. That was our indication as believers who actually read the book of Revelation. <laughs> Jews don't read this book, okay? The Revelation is not for the Jews. They have the Old Testament scriptures, and we're going to be looking at some of those in a minute. It's the Old Testament scriptures that they'll be drawing from when it comes to their end time stuff. Revelation is our book. 
and the Revelation 12 sign that appeared in 2017 in the starry heavens was our clue that we're now in the book of Revelation. Notice I didn't say we're in tribulation or in the wrath of God, none of that. Okay, what I'm saying is that the stuff that we see happening in the book of Revelation is now happening in our lifetime. We're waiting for the second sign uh, in Revelation 12, which was the sign of the dragon. We know that the woman represents Israel. Okay, and the child who is going to be born represents believers. Okay, not every believer, but the believers who are going to rule and reign with Christ. And the believers who are going to be changed, transformed, and then caught up to God and to his throne, that is raptured, harpazoed, that will happen after the woman goes into travail. Okay, so what is travail in the Old Testament? Travail in the Old Testament symbolized war or calamity. So we can expect that there would be a war in Israel a very serious war, a very intense war, one that brings Israel to her knees before the child is born. Okay? Before believers can be born, there has to be this labor. So labor is a war. That's travail, travail in Israel. And this war is going to intensify. A lot of people have been saying, oh, this war will go away. It's just terrorists. Um, you know, and Israel can handle that and it'll be okay. And if you're watching the news or if you're watching certain uh, channels, YouTube channels, and uh, have websites that you go to that give a bit of an alternative spin on things, you're seeing that this is not going back. In fact, this is actually intensifying. Every single day we see more and more and more intensification of what's happening in the Middle East. And not only that, we see big nuclear powers gathering in the Mediterranean, uh, taking an interest, an intense interest in what's happening in the Middle East. Okay, for such a small country, Israel is making a big impact, and this is prophecy. This is prophetic. Okay, this is not normal. Okay, we should be able to see this, that what's happening on the world stage is not normal or rational. In fact, non-Christians can see that this isn't normal or rational. Now, a lot of people who have end-time eschatology never accounted for the fact that there would be a war before we were raptured, like a really bad war where the whole... Um, existence of Israel as a nation would be threatened. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The existence of Israel as a nation that was gathered in unbelief is being threatened. And before this is all over, within the next few months or so, there won't be a nation of Israel anymore. Not the way we see it right now. It will be gone. I do have good news though, so uh, uh, stick with me to the end. It's actually very good news for, for Israel, for the people of Israel, for the descendants, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This will be good news, but we're going to have the bad news first. It's not going to go well for Israel. They're, they're not coming out of this in one piece. Um, they'll have a reprieve, and then it'll all come crashing down. So this is how I see it. The war started around the 7th of October of 2023 and it started out with Hamas raiding Israel and this was an orchestrated attack so however however you want to look at it I, I am not on the side of anybody here because I understand that this is all a satanic agenda here that God has already warned us about where the harlot and the New World Order Great Reset people are wanting to bring in their version of the millennium. They want to tear this all down so that they can build it up in the way that they want it. So it's the phoenix rising from the ashes sort of thing. So the war is just going to intensify and that's what we see. And it's going to rapidly intensify over the next few days. Like within a week or so, it's going to have escalated into ways that we could hardly imagine. And when it gets to the peak, that's when God is going to step in and end the war. He's, there's an earthquake, there's stuff that comes out of the sky, combatants are turning on one another. All of this we read about in Ezekiel 38. 
I'm not going to go into Ezekiel 38 in terms of a Bible study right now, but all the players that are part of that coalition of nations are all in alignment with each other. So once the war ends, once the labor ends, well, you end up with a baby. Okay, the baby comes and the war ends. It's all kind of right about the same time. That's when the male child is going to be born. That's when believers are changed in the twinkling of an eye from mortal to immortality. And the prophetic pattern from the leper and the priest and the uh, kings and the male child, there's always a seven day with an eighth day. And the seven days will begin when the child is born and then go for eight days. The eighth day will be when the male child is caught up. The dragon is going to try to devour the child during this period of time, but it, he's not going to be able to do that. During this period of time, between our change and our rapture, this is when we're going to pass off the ministry to the 144,000 of Israel. This is when they're going to be sealed in the Holy Spirit, similar to the way Jesus basically sealed the apostles on the day he rose from the dead. They're going to be sealed. And then on the day that we're caught up, that's when the Holy Spirit is going to come and be poured out on any believer, whether you're from Israel or whether you're just a, a regular person who's come to Christ because you happen to see some immortal people <laughs> wandering around, or um, whether you're a, a Christian who was lukewarm and left behind. We'll talk about that in another video. The Holy Spirit will come down. Okay, it says the Bible says in Joel 2 that he'll God would pour out his spirit on all flesh before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, the day of the Lord is just before Christ returns to set up his millennial kingdom. So one of the things that I've noticed um, lately is that a bunch of Israelis that are coming home, coming back to Israel, they've been expatriated or they're living somewhere else in the world, and now they're actually coming back to Israel. And El Al, the airline, Israeli airline, is flying people in regularly. So not only were the Jews gathered in 1947 and since when they've been making Aliyah, but they're coming back. So what I'm expecting is that some of these Jews that are coming back may be a part of the 144,000 of Israel, or some of them will be part of the remnant that's going to be fleeing into the wilderness at the time of the abomination of desolation. So to me, this is a, a very interesting thing, bringing all the Jews back to Israel. So during this eight days right here, between when the war ends and when we're raptured and the Holy Spirit is sent out, this is a time of relative peace. There is going to be sort of this calm before the storm. And I, I think that's the best way to put it. It's, it's the calm before the storm because the day we are raptured, not only is the Holy Spirit sent out, it's when Jesus takes the scroll, his commission to basically take over from God, who's initiated all of this over here, and begin the process of judging the fallen ones, of clearing out and cleaning out the garbage of demons and hybrids and all of that that's on the earth, and people who do not want to, you know, align themselves with Jesus. So there, there will be people who will align themselves with the beast. So the day that we're caught up, the first four seals are opened. Now the very first seal is the rider on the white horse. He comes in on a horse, he's got a bow, and he's given a crown. This is the victor's crown. Okay, He's not given a bow, he's not given arrows, he's not given a horse, he is given a crown the victor's crown, the Stephanos. This is the man who is going to be the seventh king, the Antichrist. This is the man who is going to take credit for winning this war right here. And he's going to keep on fighting. He's coming in. He's going to conquer and to conquer. He's riding forth, conquering and to conquer. He's going to keep doing whatever it was that he was doing back here. So is this man on the scene? Yes, he is. I don't know who he is, but he is a warrior. 
Okay, he's a warrior who is going to be given the crown, which means it looks like he uh, obtained the victory for Israel. And that's why they're going to want to follow him. Okay, he's, a, he's a war hero. The same day that the rider on the white horse comes out and conquering him to conquer, so he's going to be making more war. Okay, this is what it's all about here. The end times is kind of about war. Peace is going to be removed from the earth. The red horse rider is given a great sword with which to take peace from the earth. He's permitted to take peace from the earth. This isn't God initiating wars and strife on earth. This is God allowing it. This is the restraint being lifted. The, the rider on the red horse is being permitted to take peace from the earth. All you have to do is look around. Look around at what is going on in the world right now. People have gone crazy. And there are calls for jihad. There's, there's calls for um, people to be killing one another for, for no good reason. Okay, this is, this is what it looks like when peace is removed from the earth. It's not just about wars. It's about on your street and my street and your city and my city and cities all over the world where peace is being taken from the earth and there are millions of people who are going to die, not just in war, but in bad things that are going to happen just at the local level. Not only that, the black horse rider is going to be given a scale and to measure out food. And, you know, I don't know if you guys are like following this stuff or not, but the, the amount of um, drought and rain that shouldn't be and all of that, it has caused our basically crop failure. It's all over the world. There has, hasn't been the kind of uh, agricultural <laughs> bounty that we're used to. And if you combine that with uh, supply chain disruptions and so on, you're going to have a world that's going hungry. Famine, plagues, and death. When peace is removed, the, basically the, the moral contract that we have with each other is taken away. The world cannot operate except that we have uh, faith in one another, in each other's ability to have self-control and respect for other people. That's going to be taken away. That is going to be removed. And not only that, we've seen things like pandemics and things happen in the past. They've got other plans for, for you and me. And the winter of 2023, assuming the rapture takes place this fall, Winter of 2023 is going to be horrific. It's going to be just terrible. Let me add one more thing to this horrifying scenario, and that is that when this war um, intensifies over here, we have certain players on the world stage who control uh, oil shipments through, say, the Strait of Hormuz, or ref the refining of oil, or the, um, the, the sale of oil. And when you have a war that goes on like this in the Middle East, which is where most of our oil or a lot of the world's oil comes from, and now all of that is shut down, the price of fuel and gas and petrol and diesel is going to shoot through the roof and most of it is going to be used for the war effort. And don't think that once we're raptured here that that somehow or another all these Middle Eastern wars are going to go away. They're not. They're going to keep on going. Peace will be removed from the earth. Okay, This winter is going to be a winter of war and strife and famine and pestilence and plagues and sickness. Just giving you the happy news here. Come springtime, and all this is in my spreadsheet. Come springtime just prior to, um, right around Passover time, 10 days before First Fruits, which is Resurrection Day, this is when the powers that be, the harlot, the present world system, okay, the, not the beast system or the beast kingdom, this present world system that we're operating under right now with all those three-letter agencies who are running the show, who are going to... Um, have to deal with 
millions of people becoming Christians back here as a result of seeing believers who are resurrected into immortal bodies for a week. They're going to see for a week. And they're going to be changed by that. They're going to witness this stuff with their eyes. They are going to testify because they saw it, the testimony of what Revelation is talking about. And that's why they're going to be willing to die for their faith. They're going to have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when this time comes over here, these are the fifth seal martyrs. They're going to die. There's going to be 10 days when people who believe the fake news of Jesus is king and he resurrects people from the dead and he changes people from mortal to immortal. This is all going to be considered fake news. And you spread this news, you're going to go into some kind of regrooving place where they can change your thinking on that. And if you continue to, to promote this fake news, there's going to be 10 days when it's going to be fair game. Okay? They will call for their own day of rage. Okay, this is the this is the harlot and and the earth dwellers. Okay, the the people who aren't really people, the hybrids. Ten days, ten days of persecution. Okay, so from the time of our rapture until this time right here, we're we're just talking about you know five and a half months, five to six months from here um, to here. Revelation chapter 2 talks about 10 days of tribulation. And the fifth seal martyrs are the ones who are going to die. And they're going to die by the millions. There's going to be so many of them you can't count them. Millions and millions of people are going to be willing to die for their faith in this 10 days of martyrdom. Now, the 144,000 are mostly going to be in Israel. And Israel is going to make the covenant of death, which is in Isaiah 28. So they're going to make a covenant. And I think that Israel is going to make a covenant with the harlot that when this time of persecution comes, that Jews aren't killed. So actually the 144,000 mostly will be safe. And... Um, and, and the Jewish people will be spared. And the harlot will make this deal that they won't kill anybody in Israel, the Jews. They'll be, they'll be safe. A few days into this, the seventh king is going to be killed, basically on Passover, raised from the dead on first fruits. And then there's going to be about three and a half days. And then is the day of the abomination of desolation. And this is what starts the last half of that week. The first half of Daniel's 70th week was fulfilled at Christ's first coming. The last half will be fulfilled when the Antichrist appears and does his abomination of desolation thing going into the temple. And by the way, I have done a series on the rebuilt temple. It's actually a tent. It's the Tabernacle of David. It is not a temple on Mount Moriah. It's a tabernacle that can be set up anywhere. It's after the tabernacle of David. Um, just a tent with the ark in it and worshipers. There will also be an altar of incense. So whatever you see going on in the heavenly temple in Revelation it will be reflected in the earthly temple that's established here. And that temple will be erected in time for the 144,000 to be counted in it. Okay, so over here. So that temple will be in place, the Tabernacle of David. So the 144,000 are taken into heaven on the same day the seventh king is um, resurrected. This is the second rapture here. It's just of the 144,000 who overcome. And not all of them will overcome. The letters to the seven churches are written to the 144,000 because one of the things they have to be careful not to do is get involved in any kind of Christianity that happens to be here after 
we've been caught up because there will still be churches operating. There will still be so-called believers and um, harlot churches and institutions, and they'll want to get these people, the 144,000 of Israel, and suck them into harlot Christianity. They have to stay away from that. Because if those people who ran those churches weren't raptured in this rapture here, there isn't any hope that the 144,000 who get involved in that will be raptured when it comes time for their rapture. They have to stay away from um, the women of Revelation, the harlot and her daughters. Those are the women that she is to not get involved with. All right, so then we get to this point in time right here, the abomination of desolation. And that's when the covenant of death is annulled because it's at this point in time that the harlot is destroyed. So she can't protect any of the Jewish people that you know she's basically promised to um, protect because the beast and the ten kings will have gotten rid of her. Sixth trumpet event, second woe. It's on a, an hour a specific hour, day, month, and year. Armies will surround Jerusalem. Matthew 24, Zechariah 14.